Okay. Oof. I see. Yeah. I really like to let everybody warm up for like five minutes before, if I can, before we end up just recording, because I find, you know, there's a certain level of comfort, you know, we need to have with, you know, Zoom and, you know, just everything else going on. But um, yeah. I'm grateful you, you said yes when I asked you to be on this. Oh, it's such an honor you asked me. It's a pleasure. Oh, dude. Done. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. So um, first question, um, the one that I ask everybody at the, at the jump, how are you doing with isolation? What's, uh, what's going on? What's going on? I am loving it. But I feel very privileged. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not like on the front line. So I just want to acknowledge that because sometimes I feel like I'm way too happy about it. And then I'm like, oh God, like I'm so lucky that I can enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's really surprisingly fine. Like I guess um, I just have to make sure that I talk to people every day. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes see them in person but um it's amazing how the technology is actually um of course it's not the same but it's it's really um you feel like you have contact and i'm doing a german course right now so i also see i guarantee that i'll see like 12 people four days a week which is good yeah that's that's awesome i i found it to be the same experience taking the language courses it's just uh mm -hmm a lot of people you wouldn't normally come in contact with otherwise yeah it's also and it works. Oh, sorry. no 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 keep going i was just gonna say it's quite from the beginning i found it um on zoom quite intuitive and like i feel like there's not these kind of things where people both start talking at the same time or whatever or if that does happen it's it's easy to resolve it's not kind of like um yeah maybe because there's no lag or something like that it, it works well what were you going to say? No, no, no. I was just going to mention, you know, um, you know, you're meeting people you don't normally come into contact with, but additionally to, um, you know, kind of living in Berlin for a while and then going into a language course after you've been here for like a, a little while, I found I was meeting a lot of people who were also just, had just relocated here and yeah. Yeah. Had a, a fresh foot in the door. And that always, that kind of gave a different view of Berlin to me or the view of Germany too, because it was like, Oh crap. You know, it's like these, like they don't really, it's like they're, they're fresh to the culture as well. They're not just fresh to the language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they still um, have sun in their faces. <laughs> yeah. In a way, but in another way too, it's like refreshing to see it. I found it refreshing um, just because, really? but yeah, moving on. I want to also ask, you know, you're talking about, Maybe, yeah, it's kind of weird, I noticed too, just dealing with this isolation because um, you don't have to speak on this too much, but I always found it was for me, uh, finding it's for me, just the kind of thing where I'm away from my family um, and yeah. I'm away from a lot of my good friends. Um, and these are people whom, you know, I kind of either planned on having contact with in, within the next year um, by just traveling there or people whom, you know, are really sweet and dear to me and they're just it's just not possible to really go see them face to face maybe maybe you want to speak to that a bit i'm curious what you're yeah, sure. well yeah it's it's really interesting because i anyway feel that tension quite a lot um mainly with my family living in australia and um in the previous normal life i felt um quite bad about how little contact we have just because like only from my own side because I felt like, oh, I, I don't make, I don't know, it, weeks go by and then suddenly I realise we haven't spoken or something and then, um, and then on top of that when I consider how far it is and um, that it's not easy or, you know, it's a very big thing to, to have that contact for someone having to travel. Um, so that's generally something I'm thinking about and surprisingly, um, I speak like I speak to my parents almost every day at the moment, which is really nice because usually we don't have that time. And um, yeah, there, there really is that time, but it totally freaks me out as well. Um, just how, um, like it's not straightforward. If it also, if um, because there is of course also a virus going on, and we're starting to hear these stories of people not being able to 
actually see, even if they live in the same place, not being able to see someone who gets sick and then them maybe dying. I mean, like, I know I go to the dramatic extreme sometimes, but that really, of course, freaks me out. But I, I'm just trying not to think about it. But, um, yeah, it's a super interesting aspect of this thing. Yeah, I hear you. Um, maybe let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to just jump right into it because, like, knowing how you are, you know, also just you as well as I am like this too, I don't really, yeah, I'll just jump right into it. Um, it held back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> brought up and one thing that's come up in all the interviews is just this idea of looking within. Um, also, the name of the series is Zoom In um with Barrett obviously but um you know it's just you know this is like kind of a special time to kind of come where we all kind of forced to like be still and be in the same kind of you know be in the same place for a while and not move around and not do stuff and I wonder if you could speak to that just this idea of coming within and kind of giving yourself another like a giving yourself some more self-examination <laughs> um yeah, sure. That's a very interesting question. I see a lot of people um, writing about that kind of thing on social media and things. And in a way, the words look a little, I don't mean to like seem judgmental. In a way, you could say like you hear it so much that the, the words become a bit empty. But it's actually so true that like, um, I think I'm anyway, again, like in the um, previously known as normal state of the world. I guess I'm, I've been trying to take the opportunity to go inwards, which has come from also things like being a foreigner, being in a place where um, I go inwards or I have in the past gone inwards also for linguistic reasons because of lack of confidence in just being able to quickly um, say what's going on with me. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm practicing yoga and things like that. And I find um, I'm enjoying continuing that, that practice, I guess, in this, in this time. Right. And, and yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, it's, it, it feels like a cliche to say it, but it's just so true that what we talked about just then as well with family and stuff, but, I mean, you're getting a perspective on what's important, I suppose, in this time and like, and what you want and, I'm reflecting on, um, because I'm enjoying this so much, not having to be places and not having to do things. I'm um, noticing how that makes me feel and how I want to live um, once things start moving a bit more, I suppose. Sure, sure. No, no, I think that's, that's a big one. I think it's, um, you know, it's going to be interesting what happens after, you know, this whole thing ends or when mm. it's, I mean, it might not, I mean, I don't know what will happen, what the world will look like. We know, no one knows. So <clears throat> that's kind of, um, you know, we can speculate obviously, but like it's, you know, it's, we have no idea, but I think, you know, that's a good point you make of just kind of taking the attitude and taking some of the self-reflection you're doing now forward. I think that's, that's major. And I think that kind of, yeah, I, I love that answer. Well, I just think it's an amazing opportunity, like, because I, I don't think any other time in our lives we're going to be able to stop like this maybe and and really be decisive and, and when I have a pause normally like I have learned more and more um through working as a freelancer about building those kind of breaks in for myself sure. um but still <clears throat> when I take them often I'm I'm sort of like okay I've got to relax and then I also have to work out how to move forward and how to like realize my own artistic dreams and like make projects happen and get in contact with people. And now it's like, no, I can, you can really stop properly and really, um, yeah. And then also, as you say, cause we don't know what things are going to look like, maybe think about that in a more collective sense as well. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's really interesting to think what the expectations will be when we go back and, and if this will have such an impact on people that they're like, no, I'm, I'm not willing to live how I did before or something. Or if we're just going to be like, I need to earn money. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I want to move on just a bit because um, the series is also about talking to musicians and mm -hmm. The, we haven't had a musical conversation yet um and i'll steer it in that direction man uh so tell me real quick 
um, musical projects, like you mentioned we were off camera, you mentioned practicing, but um, I'm curious what you're doing right now to, um, yeah, what you're doing right now with music and what projects you were doing before that have been put on hold. Maybe you can just speak to your musical identity a bit. Sure. Um, well, uh, since I've been, since I've finished studying, I've been mainly, um, freelancing as a chamber orchestra musician. So that's how I am my living most of the time. That's what I've been doing in Berlin mainly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I realized at some point recently, well, like I've been gradually realizing it and tr gradually trying to do something about it that I, um, as a student, I was, I had many more different interests in terms of like um, playing with other types of musicians or also curating programs and, and playing contemporary music um, because I'm mainly playing classical Western music, sure. so to say. Um, so anyway, that was, that was something I was trying to work out how to, to do more in my, um, before this happened. Um, so yeah, this year, some of the things I was looking forward to doing and maybe hopefully can still um, do were, I, I just did a retreat before coronavirus sort of hit here. And um, yeah, that was in Brandenburg and I was with dancers and a few other types of musicians and things. So that was really nice just being able to practice and learn some new repertoire and also play it for people who have a very different response to um the norm like what i'm what i'm used to um then i was meant to go to new york city straight after that because i had a project with a composer friend that i met about five or six years ago then mm -hmm. and yeah he's coming to berlin hopefully in october and we have a recital together so we were going to begin rehearsing there and um yeah he wrote a piece for us which is really cool and actually the thing is I have to keep reminding myself that I also have to write a piece for us. <laughs> so that's a new, that's a really new musical like um, exploration for me that, that I'll have time for also um, the next months probably. And um, yeah, I was meant to go on a massive tour in May and June as well, which I don't know if it's really openly been said that it's not happening, but I'm sure everyone can tell that it's not, it, it's just going to be postponed, hopefully. Um, but it was with a guy called Damon Alban from the band Blur and um, Gorillaz. And yeah, that's a really beautiful project, um, uh, kind of inspired by the landscape of Iceland. And we had been there twice to sort of like um, improvise and sort of, it's, it's amazing, it's surprising how much these thought pieces I had that really, really made me understand the project more because in a way that could sound like such a luxury like thing to sort of develop the piece in the in Iceland or something but it's really essential to I mean it's not it's just like makes it more deep for everyone I guess more personal oh totally I mean I think anytime you know you can be like in the same room as all the people and you know, yeah it just makes I mean that's just something that a lot of music requires in order to happen um Totally. I find it interesting too, because a lot of uh, my colleagues and friends are starting to really take to this online stuff and collab online. I'm actually going to record one of these things later. And, but like the vibe is, it's a totally different vibe in a way. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like you can almost plan the interaction in a way. Um, if it's going to happen. Um, so true, true. And it makes a difference, but I'm also seeing, you know, I'm also kind of encouraged because I am seeing, you know, there are, you know, there are um, groups that are deciding to put their stuff online um, or just put their or decide, you know, they're going to live stream and they're all going to just, OK, we're going to they get some kind of I don't know how they're doing it because it's legally not, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Good point. <laughs> but nonetheless, moving on, it sounds like, you know, yeah, music dope um but <laughs> yeah music's dope generally i agree <laughs> yeah and it's funny it's like i don't know i don't know I, this, this, i'll talk to my experience a bit this is kind of how i do it i'm not like the typical interviewer where i'm just like okay next question and then the next question hmm, okay mm -hmm. but, um, yeah exactly i'm not uh i'm not your therapist from the 1960s just like what 
that's what I sign up for. <laughs> no, no kidding. This is much nicer. Go on, go on. Yeah, but no, um, I guess, yeah, fuck, fuck, fudge. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, shit. I'm sorry. Wait, okay. Where were we? It's really Music. Like, my brain is like that. Um, but No, my brain's like that, too, and I ruined it. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, it's all good. Um, but yeah. Come, just, yeah, go on. I want to talk a bit about, um, yeah, you know, just just maybe speak to, maybe just speak to like, if there's anything you're doing at the moment to prepare for this whole thing. Like, what is it you're, what is it you're doing right now that's like allowing you to prepare for this? For, I guess, <laughs> social isolation in some ways is, you know, but I mean, also like, what are you doing to prepare for it? Like, I mean, you're talking about also just having all these plans, but like, say for instance, it's kind of like we almost have to assume that they might, you know, we have to at least know it's a, at least a 50, 50 up in the air, whether or not it'll happen. Um, but uh, yeah. What do you mean prepare for what? Sorry, the, the future. Yeah. What are you doing to prepare for, um, prepare for this time? Like, I guess this was kind of going, I mean, like kind of on the metaphysical level, I would say this would probably be more like what we're talking about, just coming within and really self-examining, but maybe like, is there anything actually any concrete steps you've taken to prepare like in your uh, interesting question. <clears throat> um, like, can you go to, the, suppose, for instance, are you stocking up? Stocking up? <laughs> no, I'm not stocking up. And I don't know if that's unwise. Like, yeah, that's a, not, that's a topic. Because I was like, no, I'm not. Like, a few times there was actually toilet paper in my local place. And I was like, I don't need it yet. I'm, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to leave it for the other people that need it, you know, like I'm going to wait until, till my recycled stuff comes back. Sure. And then now it's got to the point where I'm like, come on guys, like, why did you all buy it? Except then they ordered all this stuff from like Poland, I think. Right. And now no one's buying it and it's like really expensive. Hmm. Anyway, that's, that's, a, that's not related. Um, Great answer. Keep coming. Keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, like, maybe like a lot of people I, 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 since you don't know what's coming it's a bit hard to know like as the as it gets clear that it's a longer term thing it's probably becoming more of a like the process is going on um in an improvised sort of way um yeah i'm, I'm just i'm thinking about things i want to do around my flat um i was taking german class and um thinking about whether i continue that because it's like a really amazing opportunity to to just do a couple of things that I, I really had in the back of my mind for years, actually, mm -hmm. and didn't have time for before. But really, yeah, I, I haven't practiced so much as I wanted to, but like that's really also something I, I want to just spend a lot of time on, like playing the instrument and developing the quality of what I do. And um, that would be a really great use of this time. I have a few other things, like I, I have a chamber music group here that um, we're really also trying to make the use of the time when that becomes more and more possible also to meet. And, um, but yeah, I, 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 oh, it's a question that's making me think in lots of different directions. I, I'm not sure if, yeah, if I have a very good answer, but just trying to like really just, um, I feel, as I said earlier, is I'm in a very lucky position. So I'm just trying to like, yeah, really enjoy my life and like, and, and work out um, how to make the most of it, make the most of this opportunity um, right. on a daily basis. I, man, that's beautiful. I think it's really the way to take life. I mean, it's, I mean, cause the news is coming out, you know, pretty much every day or it was for a minute and then, you know, <laughs> you know, the numbers, they would keep changing and everything, but, you know, there's, but I mean, they just made a few announcements um, here in Germany about yeah. two days ago that are going to mm -hmm. affect a lot of stuff. So, you know, it's, it is what it is, but I think, yeah, you know, day by day is really the way to take it. Um, and cause I've, it's funny, I've, after interviewing a handful of people, I noticed a lot of, and just talking with also friends and family about it. It's like the kind of feeling is almost like, you know, I slept in, dang it. Like I wanted to get stuff done. And it's like, 
you know, I think this is just like, I, I mean, I'm finding for me at least, um, this is just the time to also practice a lot of self compassion. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll ask that as a question. What is something you feel like you could do that you're doing that right now that's really compassionate for yourself other than taking, you know, classes and practicing and everything else? Like, like what is one thing you're doing right now other than those things you've already mentioned uh, that you feel like is being really compassionate? That is such a beautiful question. Um, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, wow, it's a beautiful and good question. Um, I, I think I also, I mean, it's also something I've been working on before any of this, but I don't know, just accepting like, like not wasting time as you like for, with this example of sleeping in and stuff. Like, um, I think it's also different being alone because like I do have a very long day ahead of me. So if I sleep in, it's easy for me to be like, well, okay. Like I can be really compassionate because I'm not like, Oh no, now, um, now I don't have the time for myself anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, generally, I mean, I guess I'm ask, I've been asking the question for a while probably tied in with my practice of yoga and things like how much I, I'm just letting go. I suppose it's like, there's a really nice quote. Um, I don't know where it's from, but a teacher of mine in when I did my bachelor's degree, it kind of introduced me to it and it was um, perfection. It's something like perfection is not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Hmm. And I suppose this, idea of like developing compassion for yourself is um, one way of seeing it is that you're just removing what's not necessary in terms of self-criticism or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Then underneath that you're still you, like it's not about kind of like adding a process necessarily, um, mm -hmm. but rather like, yeah, just, just shedding what's not necessary. Um, and yeah, for me, there were a lot of very self-critical thoughts and, but that, that tends to happen more when, when I have limited time, I suppose too, because then I, I'm annoyed with myself for not getting up earlier. Um, even though the night before I went to bed very late because I played a concert and, and then, and then the reason I want to get up as early is to fit in practice before another rehearsal or something like that. And, um, I suppose not having those kinds of, um, parameters is also I'm not in that situation I'm perhaps not having the time to practice in that respect but when practice self-compassion yeah no it's a I mean I think it's yeah but that sounds also all really good like really good stuff I think and yeah I yeah I mean I what I'm hearing from you is that you know there's you know it's definitely like something you have to focus on um so, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I find that to be, you know, kind of the case for everyone, um, yeah. for freelancers, because it's, you know, making your own day, you know, all the time you tend to always, you know, if you don't do everything you set out to do, or if you, cause if you plan too much, it's like, oh man, I didn't get to it all. Or if you plan to do it more and it's just a constant kind of battle. It sometimes seems like to just kind of stay at an even keel. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, so far from what I hear from what you're doing and everything going on, it sounds like, you know, you know, you're in a good spot um, where you're not, you know, you're not becoming, you know, you're not letting yourself just get psyched out by the whole process and everything else kind of going on. It seems like there's a, a genuine level of um, a genuine level of just being able to just kind of recognize when you're when there's a blockade or when there's something kind of you know, you could be doing better and doing it, but as well as just kind of seeing that, you know, maybe I should take a step back. So mm -hmm. that's something I'm really, I'm really digging from this interview. It's kind of like just a very, you know, I'm just getting a lot of, a lot of nice little nuggets from you here. Um, ah, that's so beautiful. You're a great therapist. Thank you for the assessment. <laughs> Doc, you said, oh, what, what was I going to say? You reminded me of something. Um, uh, oh, no, it's just reassuring because, yeah, as you say, like we're all kind of like super self-critical, also musicians, but I would say probably most humans. And it's, I don't know, it's just kind of reassuring when you 
when you realize like I'm actually quite a calm person underneath it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, anyway. No, no, no. On that note, um, yeah. I really, yeah, I think I think at this point, you know, I'm just gonna end um by saying a few nice things about you one more time. Um, oh my god. Which I usually this is how I usually end the interviews. I usually just say nice things to all the people I interview, but um I mean, that's so beautiful um but um you know you're you know I, I i've always appreciated you're just you know on top of just being a beast at your instrument um you're just you know someone i look at and i'm like wow you know it's just it's always amazing to just see you know just how how thoughtful you are in the process of how you do things as well as just being able to um yeah, just really, yeah, it's just a real consideration I feel like you give to like everything you do. And that kind of, you know, has a ripple effect. It's the kind of thing where, you know, because, and you focus on a lot of just how to be compassionate, how to be loving, how to be kind. And it comes out in your music, it comes out in what you're, do, you know, the way you speak to people, the way you interact in the world. And I think that's a, I think that's a, you know, that's one of the best qualities to have. That is so amazingly touching. Thank you. I just can't believe you did that. Thank you so much. Well, Baron, you're a great guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to stop recording the rebuttal. The rebuttal. <laughs> right of reply. Um, no, I just want to say thank you. That's incredibly touching. I, I didn't actually, um, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> But it's so really kind, like, um, uh, it, I mean, obviously, I can only say the same back, because if you, if you feel these things, then um, they must be something you value, which means they're part of you as well. So, I'm, it's very lovely to have this connection. <laughs> but yeah, I hope we can hang out. I don't know if you guys are, are open for um, distance hangouts, but hopefully we can see each other soon. Yeah, we should be able to. I I don't know what that'll look like, but yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> You're in the so. Plus two? Yeah, we're in the hood. So anyway. Thank you so much. That's very kind. And yeah, thanks again for inviting me to speak. Without a doubt. And I'm ending it.